All right, and joining us on the podcast today, we've got Christo Bailukudi, who is a former defensive end with stints in Oakland, Cincinnati, Baltimore, and Washington, and has the distinction of being Georgia State's first football player to be drafted into the NFL. Christo, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. So obviously right now we're in the midst of NFL free agency. Patriots are spending like drunken sailors. Everyone else is sort of (laughs) signing people here and there, but I mean... As a fan, free agency is pretty exciting, right? Because you're hearing all these rumors, you're hoping your team goes out there and signs a big name. But as a player, I imagine it's a bit of a different feeling. You know, as someone who has literally lived that life in the NFL, what is it like when you are in between contracts in the NFL and what that negotiation period is kind of like during this time of year? Um, I mean, I'd say it it definitely could be stressful. but it could be exciting. It is exciting as well, too. Um, I think just the fact as, you know, as a football player, just going to a a different city, different, uh, different team, um, you know, different culture. I think that's where the excitement comes, comes about. Right. Um, Some of them have childhood, uh, childhood teams that they would love to play with, love to play for Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, some of them are just completely, you know, new to the game like I was, uh, and just was just curious about living in a different city. Um, so it can, like I said, and that's where the excitement comes. The, just the stress is obviously negotiating the money, you know, and hoping that you're, you're getting what you're valued as. Um, you know, some of the big name guys, they're, they're the ones that obviously are thinking more so, you know, what are they worth? You know, how much should they get paid? How many years? Guaranteed money as well, too, because obviously in the NFL, it's all about the guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, it's the only sport that we know that they don't get your, your full contract isn't guaranteed. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's where that whole stress factor comes in as well, too. Um, but no, it's definitely exciting. Um, it's an exciting time for everyone, you know, for players, for, for fans as well, too, right? Because, you know, it, the, just the leagues gets shaken up during, uh, during the trade, trading, um, I guess, during like the whole trades and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Everything kind of gets more exciting because now it's, you know, things like, you know, maybe Russell going out to, to the Saints, right? We have all, everyone known Russell Wilson to be uh, a Seattle Seahawk. Right. So now him going somewhere or potentially going somewhere, it's going to shake up the league. It's going to shake up the division. So that's where it gets really exciting as well, too. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's a fun time right now because it's kind of like the deciding factor of, you know, how things are kind of going to go in the NFL. And it's not going to always going to go the same way it's gone uh, last year. You see what I mean? As far as like, let's say going to the Super Bowl and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, every player is different and everyone's experience is unique, but with your experience there, at what point in the negotiations does the player really become involved to actually, you know, meet with the GM and get a feel for the team and whether they think that that's going to be a good culture fit? Like, at what point does the agent say, okay, it's time for you to meet with the brass here? Yeah, I think it's once you get towards the end of the negotiation, Mm -hmm. you know, once you, you know, everything like, not all the um, not all the papers are signed, but you're at this point where the interest is really highly going towards a team. Mm-hmm. I think that's when you start getting to meet some of the GMs and some of the owners and kind of get a feel for the team as well, too. Um, that would I'd say would be the way that, you know, a team is more favorable to have a certain type of player. Right. So again, I'll just give you, uh, I'll just give the example of Russell Wilson. So let's say it's narrowed down to the saints and uh, who was the other team, the bears, let's say. Yeah. Right. So Russell will probably go ahead and meet with both GMs kind of get a feel for it. Right. Because Russell got to the point where he can now start to choose mm-hmm. where he wants to go. Right. Based off his uh, uh, based off his credentials and his achievements. Uh, and then from there, like I said, he'll just get a good feel for it. And then, you know, he'll choose a team he needs to go to. Yeah. So you had the chance to actually play with a couple different franchises over the course of your career there. And obviously some teams are known for sort of rolling out the red carpet to try and attract free agents. Others have a more old school style. Was there anyone when you were, you know, whether it was being courted or choosing a free agent destination or anything like that there that did anything that really stands out, you know, all these years later, as far as like, you know, what, that was kind of special what they did here. And, and if so, who, who was it? Yeah, I'd say, honestly, when I got to Baltimore, um, that was for me, uh, the team that really separated themselves from all the other teams that I've been uh, that I've been on, 
um, and also that I went to go visit as well too. You know, just based off, you know, how the, the, the infrastructure of their facility, you know, they've really, um, uh, they really emphasize on like the Baltimore defense. So as you get into the lock, uh, sorry, as you get into the facility, you see all the the memorabilia, all the achievements, you know, from Ray to, to Ed Reed, uh, to Suggs, all these guys that have, you know, allowed Baltimore to become who they are today, mm-hmm. you know, and they really show you that. And I think for me, the, the, the number one thing that I, I remember when I was sitting down in one of the meetings, um, uh, Dean, uh, Coach Dean was the uh, was a D coordinator, and he emphasized that you know when you come to Baltimore, you know you're not. This is not a mediocre defense that you're going to play for, right? This is a top tier defense. You know we're always going to be in the top ten. Um, you know people respect us. You know just so, just for the fact that you know we've have tradition as well too. So that's something that I've really uh, got to appreciate of Baltimore. I would say yeah. uh, just the organization itself. You know from the owners as well too. Um, they just treat people different there. Uh, and that's how, I guess, they attract a lot of good players to come to Baltimore. Now, on the flip side of the coin here, obviously players talk and, and they'll share, you know, experiences as far as whether it was a positive experience with the franchise and a negative experience with the franchise there. So w- when it came time to decide on a team there, based on conversations with past teammates or anything like that, w- was there ever a team that you told your agent, like, hey, if they come calling, I- I'm not that interested in heading to that location? You know, I, I can't say for myself, I was at the level where I can really choose what team that I did or didn't want to go, right? Because I still had to prove myself I was in, in that career. Mm-hmm. But like, you definitely hear teams that people try to avoid. And it's more so because of the lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? Or of the culture as well, too, you know, um, you know, just as an example, you know, people don't want to live up in Buff- uh, Buffalo, right? Because it's a cold city, right? Everybody wants to be more in a warmer town and stuff. And Buffalo, there really, really isn't much to do. The only good thing about Buffalo, to be honest, is Toronto, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of guys that play for the team, they'll go up and, and have fun in Toronto because in Buffalo, you really can't do it. Um, now, there's teams that the culture isn't as good, right? So let's say, for example, Jacksonville, Jaguars, mm-hmm. you know, the culture isn't as good. They haven't been good for a long time as well, too. Um, so a lot of team, a lot of, not a lot of guys, but some guys that have the choice try to avoid going to places like that, right? Because just the culture isn't there. So that's what I would say it'd be it, the, the two, the two main reasons are, you know, the city where it's located and how the culture is of, uh, of the, uh, the team as well too. Did you ever notice a certain age that players would get to when it maybe a switch kind of flipped as far as what their end goal was there. So let's say, you know, 27 years old, people started thinking more about like, Hey, I don't know how much longer I've got left in this. You know, I'm, I'm really going for that max contract here versus say like a 32 year old who says, you know what, I've been around the league for a long time now. My focus is now on possibly winning a super bowl and I'll even take less money to go there versus signing, you know, that big contract at, at, you know, a bad team. Was there a certain like demarcation line where that flips switch sort of flipped a little bit there? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say like in your, once you hit your Mm thirties, that's when people, uh, that's when guys are starting to say like, okay, this game obviously isn't forever. I can't play what, depending on the position, but you know, the majority of the position, you know, once you hit your thirties, you know, that's when things start to slow down because at the end of the day, the league is looking for the cheapest and the youngest player to come in and replace you. Yeah. So once you hit your, your thirties and you, let's say you made your monies in your twenties, you signed some good contracts and whatnot. I think that's when the guys start to decide like, Hey, if I have, if I don't have a super bowl yet, or if I haven't made a big impact, I need to go somewhere where I will make that big impact so I can win that Super Bowl and I can be remembered in this league instead of just being remembered for making money and and having these stats. You see what I mean? So it's now more about how can I get this championship at the end of the day? So I think once you hit 30, that's that mark where you now start to think a little bit differently. Yeah, start focusing a little bit more on legacy than, you know, what what number is going to be in the bank account at the end of the day. Exactly, right? Because if you, if you, you know, if you play to 30, you've probably made, you know, significant amount of money, yeah. right? You know, they don't keep guys in the league for that long and then not pay them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's exactly it, right? It's not, it's not about what I have in the bank now. It's about, you know, the championship uh, 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 trophies that I can, uh, that I can mount on my wall. Yeah. 
when you're joining a new team, obviously there's lots of change, right? Everything from defensive schemes and plays and everything that you need to master, just to even the drive to the stadium, the layout of the facility, all, all, game day routines and all of that. How long does it usually take for you to sort of acclimate at the NFL level to that new team and really feel comfortable within that system? I mean, in the NFL, you better do it fast. Let's just say it like that. I yeah. mean, it, you, they'll probably give you a few days for you to get acclimated um, just so you can understand where everything is, where everything is situated. But you better understand what your the defense is, what the offense is, what the scheme is, you know, within a few days. Um, because again, they're just looking for the youngest and the cheapest guy to come and replace you. That's just the bottom line, right? And it doesn't matter who you are. And we've seen that in the NFL. You can be the top, top guy and you can go ahead and sit on the bench because you haven't acclimated yourself uh, quickly enough. So, yeah, so I would say, you know, within a few days, you know, and it's and it makes sense, right? It's a professional league, right? They're paying you a good amount of money, you know, to make sure that you you know, uh, have everything down so you're ready to pr pr perform and to produce for the uh, for the team and for the organization. You know, so like I said, few days, that's about it. I mean, you don't have time to, to get yourself really acclimated like you would want to. Yeah. Now, you might be a little bit biased in here because obviously you're a defensive player, but is, is there any sort of difference in terms of how much you need to learn when you do get into a new system from the offensive side of the ball to the defensive side of the ball? Or are they roughly the same when you're transitioning to a new team, a new scheme? Well, well I would say this. So as an offensive player, uh, you're more systematic. Right. So as an offensive line or as a as a wide receiver, you know, you have your um, your plays that you need. So let's say a wide receiver needs to run a go route. What that's the route that you need to run. Yeah. Right. So they are they definitely like the playbooks. I won't say their playbooks are much larger, uh, larger. I think they're just a little bit more detailed. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas in on a defensive player side, you know, yes, we have our plays, but us is all reaction. Yeah. Right. So. You know, let's say, you know, coach says you got to go through a gap, but like the play went the other way where you have to be able to react to that play and get to the ball really quickly. You know, so like I said, I won't say the playbooks are much different. It's just the way you go about it as a defensive player and an offensive player is definitely different. Whereas, like I said, offensive players is more systematic. You know, you're, you know, you're, uh, if you're a right guard, if you need to go ahead and pull, you have to pull and obviously get to that second level. And that's how you uh, get to your uh, assignment. Whereas a defensive player, you do your assignment, but then you got to adjust to whatever the offense gives you. Mm -hmm.